TGIF, everybody. It is Friday. I'm John Manzione. This is the cold open. I'll be right back. And welcome back. This is John Manzion, Cold Open. I got a couple of things to say. First, um, it, has, it has been a busy week. I can't believe that uh, it was a week ago this morning that uh, Joey and I left here and uh, drove over to Tampa for the uh, VCC convention. Um, had a lot of good times, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was all right. We're going to do another one in Pittsburgh in June, um, which I've already covered that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Um, but I, um, came, um, back with, I learned a lot from Joey, uh, uh, about these videos and, um, he solved my audio problem for me in about five minutes, which unbelievable. Um, I usually just set things, use things at the factory setting and, um, and go from there. <laughs> I figure, you know, they're, they're going to, at the factory, going to set up what you should use it at. And if you want to tweak things, you can tweak them, but, you know, um, unbeknownst to me, that's not the case when you're dealing with Sennheiser Audio, um, but nonetheless. So, anyway, today's review um, is going to be on the Vapor Shark uh, RDNA from Vapor Shark, and this is, um, the reason why we're doing this review a um, couple of reasons. One, whenever I go to one of these conventions, I like to pick out um, a memento, a, um, a, a decent um, piece of hardware um, that I could uh, bring back as... Um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to explain what a memento is. You know what a memento is? Yeah, put it on the shelf. I say, hey, I got that there, you know? So... That's what I decided to do. Originally, it was going to be uh, a, a custom drip tip, uh, you know, 20 bucks, um, something like that. And, and uh, I found one. I found one I really liked. It was made out of glass. So <laughs> had my wife been there, uh, she just smacked me upside the head and said, what are you doing buying glass? Because I'm an idiot. I, I'm a klutz. And I, I, um, I, so I bought it. I, I put it on my... Um, I put it on my my uh, tank here, and um, and uh, I went back uh, to the hotel <laughs> late that night, and I sat this down on the desk, and just with the slight nudge of my hand, I knocked it over, and <laughs> the glass went flying. So, yeah, I was twenty bucks shot. So, you know. Anyway. Um. Uh, it was um, toward the end of the show, I guess, uh, uh, either late Saturday or, or I can't remember whether I bought this on a Saturday or a Sunday down here, down here. And, um, uh, and, 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 and I saw the booth. They were really crowded. And uh, I just remember that I just remember that Julia had made, uh, I think, her third attempt in the last couple of years to reach out to Vapor Shark and, um, you know, do a review of, of one of their products. Uh, we had heard a lot of good things about them. And um, uh, what's standard in all of our emails is that we will um, gladly send the product back. Um, and, uh, and still nothing. We didn't hear from them. So whether they didn't get it or whether they didn't care or... Or whatever, I don't know. But um, so, so I recognized the name, and of course, I recognized the RDNA, and um, and I picked up uh, uh, one of the um, Zen uh, ZNAs, uh, and in Springfield, I think it was. And so I thought I'd go over and look at them. So I was, I was looking at them, and they were really nice looking. They are a very decent. Uh, let's go down here to the other camera. They are a very decent looking box mod. And they have the ZNA, uh, ZNA the RDNA 40 uh, has a lot of new features, which I will go over and which I also went over in my written review on spinfield.com. And uh, it, is a, um, uh, it is a good looking device. But believe it or not, I have several box mods and that was not the, 
that was not the, the thing that sold me on it. The thing that sold me on it was I overheard. I'm trying to look for it. So if you see me, what the hell is he doing? I'm trying, I'm trying to look for it. I know. Here it is. I know I bought everything in here this time. So um, this, all right, let's go down here for a second. One more time. All right. This is, this is how you charge the little baby. This is inductive charging. Um, had Tesla one out over uh, the other guy, um, this would be commonplace. And so would charging things through the air. Um, but this is a charging plate. And the way you charge it is you plug this into your USB port. I didn't get a wall adapter, so I guess you've got to have a computer to do this. Um, cause, uh, uh, but I don't know. I'll, and I'll explain why I don't know in a minute. Um, but you basically take it and you place it on the plate, charging plate, and it charges. And that's it. And I saw this and I said, oh, I got to have that. So I bought it. And, and I'm kind of really glad I did. This is a, this is a, this is really a good box mod. This has got a lot of great features. Maybe not a lot of features that you guys um, want. A lot of mainstreamers might want, certainly might not want to pay for. Um, but I think it was a great memento for myself. Um, and, and so I picked it up and I also picked up, uh, with this, this was one, this was one cost. It was one ninety nine at the, um, at the convention and, uh, one eighty nine on their website. So I paid it an extra $10 there. And then, uh, the inductive charger, this was $25 or twenty four ninety nine, And then the skin this rubbery plasticky skin thing here is uh, $9.99. So, and I'll put that back on in a minute. And by the way, yes, the skin does, uh, the, the inductive charging does work if you have the skin on. And uh, I know a lot of people ask that question uh, since I've been back and uh, I wanted to tell, and yes, it does. It, it does, and which is, a, which is awesome. Uh, and I don't see why it wouldn't. So, um, so anyway, okay. Now, before I get into, um, into uh, uh, heavily into this, I, I want to tell you something else. Um, and I want to know if anybody else has, has experienced this, any of you married folks or, or people that are living with um, uh, someone or, or whatever. I got to get a drink. Hold on just a second. I've been talking a lot this morning. Um, Last few months, I have been um, using uh, the sub tanks and 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 most recently the Delta Twos and the Atlantis and and a lot of these um, a, a big cloud maker stuff. And I've changed the way I vape. Uh, I no longer vape, uh, uh, you know, like I like I used to smoke. I'm a, I'm a lung lung inhaler now, a lung hitter. And and, I, and, and, and and my wife and I, Lisa and I, we, um, we, uh, we, we go to bed pretty early, um, to kick back, watch television, because we're, because we're old people. And um, uh, so I guess we go to bed about eight o'clock and uh, watch TV for three hours and, and go to sleep. So usually what I've been doing is going to bed with this thing or with something else, like with a, um, with a um, sub ohm from Aspire, with the sub ohm batteries or whatever. And... And I would, um, I would vape normally like this. Now, I don't really lung hit when I'm in bed. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to, you know, trying to out outclass somebody else doing a cloud, which which I couldn't do anyway. But it it is it is basically like so. I, I think I timed it. It's like between two point seven and three point one seconds is my usual draw. That was 2.2 .2 seconds. So it's like that. Now, if you look behind me, I have a fan on. And by the way, that wasn't calling the sound. That wasn't causing the sound either. Um, the hissing in the previous videos. But look at that. Look at that vapor behind me. Now, imagine doing that for a couple of hours every night in your room um, with, um, uh, watching television with a woman who uses uh, a much smaller device and, um, it doesn't vape like that. I mean, like I, I think I explained before she, she vapes like this. And, 
and much smaller clouds than that. So she told me this week that um, I needed to um, stop using these in the bedroom, <laughs> bedroom and going back to my spinners and my X-Jets. So I have been um, basically forbidden um, to use this in the bedroom. And, and I, I, I really, I can understand why. I mean, it may be fun for me, um, but it really does cause a lot of vapor uh, in the bedroom, and it doesn't clear out as fast as you'd like it to. So, um, so there you go. That's the lesson I learned this week. Um, and uh, all right, let's move over to um, let's move over to this new um, this new this new device here. And you may notice it, a different setup here uh, down here. This is um this this is the same camera, okay? But um, uh, and this is why I love Joey so much because uh, he can see he can see the trees from the forest. You know what I mean? For me, um, I have so much crap going on around here. So much. So I'm so busy all the time that I cannot see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest, however that goes. And um, and I don't think right anymore. So he saw the setup that I was using for the second camera, and um, he said, "You know, John, what you need to do." And he explained to me that I, I ought to buy, um, uh, you know, a, 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 an overhead device or, or, or a particular type of uh, tripod or arm or whatever that could reach out and get a better angle um, for uh, the camera. And um, I, I, <laughs> I was a professional photographer for more than 30 years, and, I, and that didn't even occur to me to do that because I didn't think they, I didn't think they made them. Uh, until I remembered what he was talking about, and and um, and then it was and then it was easy, <laughs> it was easy to find. But anyway, so what you're looking at now is I have a, a magic arm, what they call a magic arm, um, uh, on my uh, attached to my desk, and I can put it in any position I want, and um, and, and so I I set it up that way, and it works perfect. Okay, so anyway. And uh, by the way, I'll make little chapter markings so you can just skip through this crap if you don't want to hear it. All right. Now, I did write a, uh, a full review on this going over all of the um, specs on it. So uh, I may, I, 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 I just, I don't know what I'll mention on here or not because I've already used almost 14 minutes already. Um, this is the Faber Shop box, uh, Faber Shark RDNA. The, the, what makes it the R is the replaceable battery. It's got a magnetic door. A lot of people are complaining about that mag magnetic door not being strong enough, but all week long I haven't had that, that issue. Of course, um, I think I've only had it out of its skin maybe a couple of hours, and the skin certainly does hold it in. But it certainly does come off easy. Um, you got this little doodad here for pulling the battery up. Uh, the battery is one of the uh, LG 35 amp um, uh, 2500 mAh batteries. Uh, it really looks nice. It and um, and uh, it's got uh, what I used to call years ago the uh, rubbery paint jobs on these things. And what it is, it's just a, a textured um, a textured paint on it, and it feels really really nice. You certainly don't need the skin, um, but if you you know you're investing 200 bucks into a device like this. Um, you might want to spend an extra ten dollars just to protect it. One of the biggest features of this new um, of the of the new one is a much larger display. Uh, it is so sharp and it is so bright and you can easily see it. It's got the battery indicator, uh, temperature control, which, by the way, unless you're using uh, unless you're building your own and using nickel wire. You really can't take advantage of controlling the temperature, so you need um, the nickel wire um, K, uh, coils. Now, Vapor Shark does make uh, some coils uh, with nickel wire, some pre-built coils. I know they sell them for the sub tank, the OCC coils that they do themselves. Uh, I guess they take them apart, remove the coils, or put new coils that are made out of nickel wire. And uh, you can use those just like you would anything else. Let's come back up here for a minute. You can use them like, like anything else. And uh, uh, you, you screw it in, and um, all of a sudden you can control the temperature. Now, 
controlling the temperature doesn't mean that that's all you get to do. I mean, you could set your you could set the temperature of of your um, device at 450 degrees, and then still um, set your wattage, set your power, and uh, and they work and they work together. It's it's not like uh, voltage and wattage. I mean, you know, I can set one or the other. This is a, a totally separate thing. And um, this is this 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 temperature thing is it's going to be big. I know a lot of companies are working on devices that do this, and um, you can expect to see a couple of them by the end of this month. Um, but they have it; they've had it now, and it and it, uh, it it supposedly works well. Well, I didn't pick up any of the nickel coils, and I did not go um, uh, through the week um, trying to find nickel coils. Um, uh, I, I read a little bit about the nickel coils. I know they're, they're kind of a pain in the butt to wrap. Um, and, uh, and and tell you the truth, I have a couple of hundred OCC coils, and I didn't feel like spending 20 bucks for five of them. So um, made out of nickel, so I didn't do it. But, um, uh, and then I don't really know. I'm sure, I don't know, maybe for a review, of, um, you know, uh, somebody else's technical review, maybe it might be worth um, showing you the difference, but... For me, uh, for uh, for me, it's just it, it just wasn't worth it. Um, I'm not going to spend uh, twenty bucks for my for my coils for five coils. Um, so uh, this is a seven to forty watt device. Let me put this in. <laughs> I forgot to forgot where I'm going here. This is uh, seven watts to forty watts, and um, it is nice and clean. Uh, you really, I, I, it's hard to explain, but I, but I mean this, um, you get a richer, I don't know, it feels like a richer vape somehow. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, I'll, I'll give you a couple of, um, demos here. I've got a new, um, a new, um, uh, <laughs> new Delta II atomizer. Jesus, it's going to be great. New Delta II atomizer. I took the RBA component out here, and I bought um, I bought a few hundred um, um, LBC coils, and uh, at a real good price, and and uh, and I'm using those. So, okay, that's what it looks like, and let's bring it back up here, and this is what it looks like with that on. I don't have the skin on um, yet, but that's what it looks like. And I have this set to 39.8 watts. I found this to be my sweet spot for this particular coil. Thing over. Moving down to the bottom camera again. Let me give everybody a close up one more time of the. Let's focus in. I don't know why my autofocus isn't working. It sure should be. It doesn't even look like it's recording anymore. But, you know, anyway, there's that. And the battery compartment again. This, this really is a nice idea. I mean, they're, they're, they're RDNA 4, uh, 3, excuse me, the 30 watt, had a screw here. And you had to unscrew that to replace the battery, which, was, um, which is kind of a pain um, if, you're, if you're lazy. Uh, 2500 mAh. Now... I did, I did want to point out a couple things. Now, this is the $200 uh, Vapor Shark. This is the $49 iStick. Uh, this is a 50 watt device. Um, this is a $200 device. And um, they pretty much do, they do many of the same features, uh, have many of the same features. And they both deliver really good vapes, okay? So, who would want to spend, look at this, who would want to spend uh, $200 on this or, or, or just spend $50 on this? Well, let me tell you. In my experience, most of the people that I know would be fine with an iStick 50 from Ely. $49, 50 watt device, 4,400 mAh uh, battery in there, lasts you for hours and hours. Whereas the Vapor Shark is four times the money and um, only has a 2,500 mAh uh, battery. Um, but this will vape down to uh, 0.1 and no, 0.16 with regular coils. 
and with the nickel coils it will go down to 0.1 so you can actually vape with 0.1 coils in here this will go down to um, 0.3 I believe uh, or is it the 0 0.5? I believe the ice stick 50 is the 0.3. I would check on it, but I'm too damn lazy. Um, and, and, and in all seriousness, this, this, this is, this is so well made. It's, I mean, this is made, this, this is well made too. I mean, there's nothing to, nothing to really complain about, about this device, except, uh, you know, a few things. The, this, this is made on a, on a quick floor, a uh, quick factory floor, and um, sometimes the uh, LED glass in here isn't placed exactly right, and either your W will be cut off or your battery indicator will be cut off, um, depending on which one you get. And, um, uh, you know, they're, they, they, um, but other than that, they're, they're good. I mean, you know, the tolerances are nice, the, uh, um, uh, the fitting is nice. It feels great in your hands. I like the rounded edges, the whole thing. But this is this is and this is fifty bucks. And so, if you're going to spend uh, four times that amount for uh, a box mod, it better be special. And uh, this is special. Um, I'm not saying that everybody uh, needs to go out and get one of these, but you will. Um, if you had both of them side by side, you would definitely know that the firing button here is so much um, so much more solid so much more sure uh, than this one is um, you you get a feeling that this is going to last for uh, you know a decade and this will last for maybe a year um, the up and down buttons here the plus and minus buttons they're sure they're clicky they're solid um, it, it, they really feel like they're, um, like they're handmade, uh, or, or in other words, um, you know, not hand, well, handmade, but not on the factory. You know what I mean? It's just, they feel, they feel like a superior product and they are. Um, and if you have the money and you want a top of the line, uh, box mod and you don't mind spending uh, two hundred dollars for it, uh, then then I I would absolutely recommend it. Um, but if you don't, and um, you don't want to spend more than uh, say fifty bucks, um, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, buying the iStick fifty either. Um, I would I'd like I and I think in my um, see I keep turning it over like don't turn it over like this guys because you will fire it. Um, not so with this because it's just not going to happen. It's rounded edges. Um, if you know, if you have the money, do it. If you don't, um, you can certainly, certainly be happy with an iStick 50. Um, I got uh, nothing to gain uh, by pushing either one. Um, but I and I've used them both this week. But I got to be honest, I've used the Vapor Shark. Um, probably uh, 10 times as much. And it goes especially well with the uh, Delta II from Joytech and um, the um, sub tank. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me while I put this on. I'm going to be over here. Let's bring the camera back up here because I'm not doing anything in the space of the other camera. So it's. It's it's here, let me get down here. Come on down here again. It's basically like putting on a pair of spandex, um, and uh, yeah, there was a time in my life when I weighed 160 pounds, and I would put spandex on when I went riding my dead speed. Um, <laughs> not anymore. Okay, so and that's basically it. And you're in, and you're solid, and it 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 feels great. So. I'm going to give you a vape with it again. Should I? Should I? It doesn't matter if I do or don't. That really does it. Let's come back up here. Um, the Vapor Shark is an excellent box mod. Uh, it feels, it, particularly if you're comparing it to the less expensive ones like the uh, iStick, this is a solid um, Chevrolet sedan. And it will get you to and from work. You can take it out in the country for once in a while. 
You can have a lot of fun with it. And if you're, <coughs> and if you're on a budget, it's perfect. And they come in different colors too. However, if you're young, you don't have responsibilities, you make good money, and you're really into vaping, and you want something super cool, you want something that someone's going to go, oh my God, that's a vapor shark. And you're going to go, hey, yeah, it is. Um, you can spend 200 bucks and get this. I have no buyer's remorse for buying this uh, for two reasons. One, it was my memento of the, of the, uh, of the show, so uh, there is no reason for me to, to feel bad. It's a tax write-off. <laughs> <laughs> and the other reason is it's a damn good device. It doesn't last as long as the iStick 50 as far as battery life goes. Um, I, but, you know, that 35 amp battery does help somewhat. Um, uh, so I, um, I, don't, I've only char I only charge it once a day, um, which, is, which, which is pretty damn good when you consider how much I vape. So, you know, it does the job. All right, so that's it. Anyway, it's spinfuel.com. I, I have a written video there. <laughs> a written video? <laughs> God. I have a written uh, <laughs> written review, a um, couple thousand words. And it was pretty easy to write because uh, the words just flowed because it was, it was fun to write about this. Um, and, and so, oh, and I, 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 there are some other things in there that you'll learn, like it's passed through vaping and... And things like that. If you don't want, if you don't want to buy the uh, the optional uh, con inductive charger, you can charge it through USB and, and things like that, or 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 take the battery out and charge it, put it back in. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's it is a solid device. I love the inductive charger on here. I wish others would do this because I just think it's really cool. I wish that. Um, no, never mind. I, I I just wish everything had an inductive charging or charging through the air. That would be so cool. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention is tomorrow, Jack and I are filming a episode, season one, episode one of the Jack and John show. We will also announce the winner to the sub tank uh, drawing. Uh, we've gathered all of the names up and we're going to pick the winner. And um, we're going to film it tomorrow. Hopefully, if I can edit it, um, we will have it up tomorrow afternoon. And, um, and that's about it. Uh, Dave wanted me to mention a couple of things about Spin Fuel, the magazine, since he's now the editor-in-chief. I'm still the publisher, but it's his on a day-to-day -day basis. Last week, he introduced the Mega Menu, uh, which is a beautiful menu system that you can um, uh, use, navigate you through your site, through the site, and find anything you want. Um, there is an Ohm's Law page now that... It's sort of like Ohm's Law for dummies, but in a very respectful way, it kind of explains what Ohm's Law is, how to use it. And there is a custom-made, um, custom-written uh, Ohm's Law calculator that Kair, another employee of mine, uh, wrote for us from scratch. And it works perfectly. I tried it out a few times. As a matter of fact, we had a few, um, several vapors that I know try to bust it and, it, and it didn't break, so it was perfect. Uh, and uh, as of yesterday afternoon, uh, we can reach out all over the world now because you can, um, you c if you wanted to, uh, you could um, translate our webpage and every article in it into um, uh, more than a dozen languages, including Chinese, Japanese, Russian, German, French, um, Swedish, you name it. Uh, and it's on the fly, and it is wicked fast. I tried it on a few of them, and I mean, I click the button, and I scroll down to the to the content, and there it is. It's done, and it draws it out beautifully. And I, I, uh, I, I grabbed some copy and uh, ca uh, copied it onto my clipboard on my computer. Went over to an official translator, put it in, and it translated it back out in English perfectly. And uh, so it's really cool. So. Um, uh, I think Dave wants to reach out to a lot of native-speaking French, Germans, um, Swedish, Chinese people and allow them to read our content without having to translate it, um, which I think is pretty cool. It was a really good idea, something we should have done a couple of years ago, uh, but I was just too damn lazy. <laughs> so uh, Dave's like 30 years younger than I am, so he should be doing a lot of really cool things that perhaps I should have been doing. Um, but I'm old and, and I should be forgiven. And I'm sick, too. So, you know. Anyway, 
So we will see you tomorrow with Jack and uh, the Jack and John show. This is John Manziel from the Cold Open. It was nice that you dropped in to see me. I hope you stayed through the whole 40-minute video. I don't know how the hell it got that long. Um, but have a good weekend. And uh, don't forget The Walking Dead on Sunday night. Take care.